What's her name? I think my animations doesn't pass through this thing. Can I check if they will pass the animations? But this is already recording. Okay, let's see if it doesn't happen. sure how this thing oh. <laughs> no but it's still not working <laughs> but I think it's off yeah <laughs> yes yes now it is working okay 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 <laughs> for the introduction and for the invitation for visiting. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody who came here. And so what I will talk today is about the field of indefinite causal order. So I will start just introducing a bit about the field for, I think most here are already familiar with the talk, but to include everybody. Uh, then I will comment about the implementation of the quantum switch in many different approaches. Optical experiments, uh, the quantum switch in a quantum space-time, or other uh, perspectives which would be a simulation of superposition of black holes where we use um, entanglement of accelerations or entanglement of heights where we can do the quantum switch using the gravity of Earth. And I will comment all these uh, proposals comment also about the definition of event in each one of them. And finally, I make a summary about the idea of being a simulation or genuine realizations of a quantum switch on that. Uh, the field of indefinite causal order, born from a seminal paper from Lucien Hardy, where he was trying to uh, he pointed out to conservative, conservative and radical features of quantum theory and general relativity. So uh, quantum theory is that has a causal structure fixed in advance. So I have to know what are, um, which are the order of the gates I am applying in the operations for describing a circuit, for example. While um, General relativity doesn't have this causal structure fixed in advance. I have to solve Einstein equations to, in the end, um, know which events are in the causal or past, causal or future or past of each other, or if they have a space like separation. Uh, but general relativity is deterministic in the sense, given some border conditions, I have a unique solution, while quantum theory is probabilistic, and more than that, irreducibly probabilistic. And it's expected from a theory of quantum gravity to have uh, both radical features, right? So he was trying to look to quantum theory without this causal structure fixed in advance. Could we generalize? It would be a first step, generalizing quantum theory without this 
fixed causal structure. Uh, so motivated by these ideas, uh, it was due to the process <coughs> matrix formalism. And here, the idea is, let's consider inside each box uh, standard quantum mechanics holding inside here, so it can talk consistently about measurement operations. And what I can understand as an event in the setup is when one quantum system enters here, I apply some operation, and then it leaves, it would be somehow what is an event. And what is happening here in between we don't know, could be some exotic space-time that uh, uh, we don't know, but using this, having this in hands, quantum mechanics here, we could build things and understand better um, space-time, uh, some generalization of this quantum theory. Uh, the most important task with indefinite causal order that uh, this formalism describes is the quantum switch. And the quantum switch was introduced actually before the process matrix. And the idea is you have a target qubit. It goes through laboratories Alice and Bob. It is coupled to a control system that will tell which is the order, if it's A and B. And uh, in the end, you have to do some measurement of this, this system. And it's the, there are many tasks with indefinite causal order, but the quantum switch is the only one that we really know some implementation until now. And this is why I'm going to speak mostly about, I will focus my seminar on that. Um, there is one thing that we can do the quantum switch, but if we measure the control qubit, in I have the control qubit in a base zero plus one, for example, and I measure in the base zero one, then I don't end up with something that is quantum interesting. I end up with, I am represented here as the son of these two Gaussians. I end up with some classical mixture of definite orders, A and B. But when I measure in the basis plus minus, for example, then I find with this pole selection something interesting, quantum speaking, that I'm representing with this interference pattern here, okay? But if I don't do this post selection, I still have this um, definite order if I don't really. Uh, the, I would have a statistical mixture just. Um, well, the realizations of the quantum switch that we have until now, we have many proposals, but the real realizations that are really done experimentally are on optical uh, experiments. Here is the first one from uh, Walter and Bruckner group from Procopio and collaborators. Um, and the idea is you have a target qubit, which is a photon. I mean, the target qubit will be the polarization of this photon. And the control qubit will be the path of this photon. So uh, at one moment, you have a beam splitter here that will have different paths for this photon. And according to this path, you will have first the operation A and after B or vice versa. And uh, then you can perform a quantum switch like this. Another kind of realization of topical tables is from Angus uh, One and the collaborators, where here they encode the target qubit on the special modes of a photon, and the control qubit is the polarization then it is, well, somehow you still have a path because the polar, according to the polarization, you have different paths of your photon. And according to that, you have first the operation A or first the operation B, you go the way around and after A. And well, you have the experiment, but if you consider that your event is given by an operation applied on a system, then I would have a genuine and indefinite causal order in the sense that I have two events. Because here I have A applied just once, even though that given the polarization, the beam splitter, uh, the photon comes first here to A, or it goes the whole way around and after comes to A, it will go just once. So in the sense, if you consider that event is an operation applied on a system, 
then you can say I have two events here and I have a definite causal order. I have an experimental for definite causal order. But if you take the definition of uh, relative and you take, let's write a space-time diagram. And then I have here space and time. And then I have two events for the operation A. And you would say, no, it is not a definite causal order. It is just a simulation. It is like a coarse graining because I am not really uh, testing here the paths. I'm not like differentiate them, but they are different. It's just because I build the experiment in a way that I cannot differentiate, but uh, they are four events. So it would be a simulation of a quantum switch. And there is much discussion about that. And many, um, uh, many different opinions and st starting from different um, definitions of an event. Um, well, independent, regardless of the definition of event, if in definite causal order there are many nice uh, applications like more efficient quantum computation, quantum commutation, time of machines, no more covariance, and even though it provides insights to a theory of quantum gravity. Maybe it's not a theory of quantum gravity, but provides insights. Okay, but um, there is a still like uh, how do you really go to graft? How do you really connect that to graft? So this is a proposal for Bruckner Group. It's a slide from Charles Levy Bruckner from a school I attended of him. <laughs> and the idea is the following. You have here one massive body and you put that in a superposition of different states, zero and one. Could be, uh, well, this is well defined for small masses. For example, I'm an electron uh, and molecule, but suppose we have a big massive body here. And what is the quantum space, what's the space time here in between? If I have agents A and B, what do they feel? How do they perceive the space time here? And, well, let's make an assumption that you have this space time here. So I have here the state of the mass. Let's suppose that the state of the space time here in between is given by this one, where the first one is the space time generated by this mass, this state, and the second one, the other uh, space time generated by the other metric, let's say. And well, this is a very simple assumption. Could not be, could be, but then what they did, they assume it, you have that, and let's see the consequence. And can we do a quantum switch with this idea here? So can we use these degrees of freedom as control qubits for a quantum switch? And well, using this directly would be quite hard, but let's suppose that these agents are equipped by clocks so indirectly, instead of use this, we use the proper time of these clocks that would be got entangled with these space times, and then we will use that to do a quantum switch. And then uh, there is this proposal from a uh, Taslavi group, uh, Madalena Z, Fabio and Igor, where they propose the following. So I have here this situation where the massive body is in two different states. And here I have the clocks A and B. For this first branch here, B uh, is close to the, closer to this path, to this earth, and A is further. So if I have a clock, the ticks of this clock for uh, B would run slower than the ticks of Alice, and vice versa for the other case, right? And then, note that the third click of B is in the causal future of Alice and the other way around here for um, the other branch. Uh, so in this case, A could send a, a bit to Bob and in this case, Bob could send a bit to Alice. And note here that what we are trying, what is uh, put as an event here is given by the proper time of the clocks. So what is implicitly understood here, but it is written clearly in the paper, but what I it, you can see implicitly in the picture is that the event 
I have this clock here, and what I understand as an event in this branch of space-time, this red dot here, is the same as this, because the proper time of B is the same that two brains, okay? And vice, the same for A. So for this branch, I could say make the operation um, A and after B and vice versa here. And if I have the sum of these two, then I have the sum of this order and I do a quantum switch with that. Note one thing, we will use this after, that I could not perform a quantum switch using the first tick, neither the second, because they have a space-like separation. Just from this third tick, I can really invert this uh, causal and past future, causal uh, future light coins. Uh, okay, I will come back later. But just, let's just note that here in the quantum switch of the gravitational quantum switch, we still have to do pole selection. So if I measure in the end, I do all that, but I measure the mass of the Earth in the base zero, that is I measure the position of the mass, I end up with a classical mixture of orders A and B. So I have to measure the base of the state of the Earth or the massive body in a diagonal basis. So I don't know, I put that mass in a uh, interferometer and measure that. And then I get this um, superposition of A and B or BA. So I would have this, what I'm representing by this interferometer, interferometer pattern. Uh, so in the same way as in the optical quantum switch, we have to do the post selection. Um, and then, Yes. Sometimes you have these unitaries that you have on the previous slide, mm. such that only one of them appears in probability one. So it's not really, sometimes you. Okay. It, it appears without post selection in the sense that it's just probability one. Okay, you are really in the state like plus. For example. And then you would appear with this without this post selection. For some unitaries. Okay. Not all. Okay, thanks, Chazo. Um, so. Um, well, and then what we have is these two situations here where we have the realization of a quantum switch and um, mathematically, right, operationally speaking, the equations are the same, the part that the systems I am using are different. And when you look, the systems it should be very different, right? You look to that, Okay, here I have like a quantum space time and these light cones here, this crazy thing. And here I have an optical experiment that uh, we can do many things of uh, quantum computation, etc. but we still think it's different. Most of us will look to that and feel there is something that is different on that. And my question is, what is the role of gravity in an indefinite causal order? What is gravity really doing that if I don't need the gravity for doing that? Okay, why is graft appealing to be so uh, somehow to have something? And so one question is, is possible to find an operational a difference between these two scenarios, right? Uh, well, Nicola and Marco have uh, a lot to say about that. I think um, there are many considerations in this paper. Uh, but some the difference between some explicit examples, something is still missing between these two situations. Well, there is one thing that's important to mention, that this one, well, I wrote left, but it's right, okay? <laughs> the right one provides a way for proving a quantum in space-time, which is the main result from the paper of Madalena Zir, called as Bell's theorem for temporal order, where uh, you can use a configuration like that to uh, violate Bell inequalities and prove that the space-time is really quantum. But uh, even though you can do that, it seems to be, um, it's also a get dunk experiment because it is far from realization. So it is a proposal which is far from Planck scale, but in this way, it is still far from uh, current technology. So we keep this uh, knowledge in the theoretical sense from now. And, um, well, let me add some, before proceeding, comparing these two situations, let me add some ideas about 
the realization of the gravitational quantum switch. So now, uh, these are uh, parameters that is in the paper of Madalena Ziv, where they consider a mass of 0 0.12 micrograms. So you have here the two masses in the two states, uh, one mass, sorry, in the two states, 0 and 1. You consider they are in a distance of 10 to minus 9 meters, and the clock, A, is a distance of 10 to minus 15 meters from the mass, which is very uh, small, but let's see what we get with that. The same for B. And then you consider that you have here, uh, yes? I don't know, it was her... <laughs> yeah, the nuclear side of a proton. <laughs> it is true. Uh, I don't know, it's not my result, results, it's results from the, well, Chaslev, do you know or I do you remember? <laughs> to have some. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> but not the mass, right? <laughs> How you will confine a mass of 0 to 12 micrograms in the size? I don't know, but just for having some notion. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a good comment. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, the <laughs> Yes. So suppose that you can take a piece of a neutron star and put it here. <laughs> And then you would share this quantum switch. We just uh, sorry. Yeah, the black hole. Yeah, the black hole would be much smaller. Yeah, no, it's definitely not. It should be a black hole. Yes, it's far from Planck scale. I think this was the message. I mean, it's crazy. It's the bad. Mass, the mass is close to the Planck mass. Mm, okay. Yes, and the <laughs> yeah. I will comment on the long yeah. enough here. The other These thing are thing. about the main results, actually. The other, now, if you remind me, the other motivation was to show that the, that, um, that the time will be enough such that um, any collapse model with these parameters would collapse in the meantime. Mm, okay. It would collapse longer than the experiment to perform uh, indefinite cause or other would be completed. And the, much of the motivation for the, uh, all these cause models is, oh, no, no, not to have a superposition of space time, and not to have a superposition of cause or because we don't know what to do then. But then the parameters are chosen like that, that even the Penrose Hiroshi model would collapse it after it's completed and you prove that it's indefinite. Mm, yes, you have some comments on that, it's true. It's true. No. Okay, someone else have some any comments? Okay. Uh, so please keep interrupting me whenever you want. Okay. <laughs> I'm happy with the discussions. And well, so you have here the clocks, you wait the time you need, and you perform the quantum switch, sharing the target qubit and applying the operations. Um, in the moment uh, you're scheduled there, okay? And for doing that with these parameters, you would have to wait 10 hours, okay? And one observation that I had that, um, well, was the following. Uh, so I will consider the same parameters, okay, as before. 
And before sharing the target kill bit in between uh, the two agents, I will wait some time. And after that, before sharing, I will put the clocks close to each other. So they, and then the distance they are close to each other, if 10 to minus 15 is reasonable here, here as well, okay? <laughs> and then we will share the target qubit. And we, if we do this situation, then the time from 10 hours returns out to come to milliseconds. It's uh, still far from reaching. I tried to change the parameters and find something that would be doable, but it's uh, still, it's much better, but it's uh, still out of being done. And this is why I started to think about other possibilities. And so we were talking here about the gravitational quantum switch using this setup. And if I take this thing here and mirror it, I could think about the situation here. And um, where I have the system that my mass is in a classical position and the clocks in a superposition of different heights. So they are entangled of uh, like A being down and B up and vice versa. And then we can use the same idea that was performed uh, by Charles and Madalena to perform the quantum switch with this setup. And in this case, how would it be uh, the realization? Um, there is some, um, some, first, some important difference between these two setups that this first one provides a test on quantum graft if you perform that, while well, the second one is a test on the interplay of quantum theory and general relativity. And the question, if it's a quantum switch, a genuine or not, I will still discuss uh, this difference here. There is a third possibility where uh, is instead of having these clocks here standing on the graph of Earth and accelerating, we could have a superposition of accelerations, okay? So uh, that would sound to be much more doable, right? And let me uh, just comment one thing that here, I mean, think about uh, these clocks in, the, in a symmetric position here of uh, the massive body. But here, and here they become entangled, so here they are symmetric. But I could have thought about a situation where B, for example, is exactly in the middle and Alice is just in the, uh, this asymmetric situation. Then I would have, instead of entanglement, just a superposition of clocks that, uh, or superposition of accelerations while one of the clocks are in a uh, specific acceleration. There might be some discussions or also about if it is a good indefinite way of doing a definite causal order or not. But if you think about experiments, having a superposition would be much easier than having an entanglement. So it is something to consider when thinking about really proposing an experiment, okay? But for here in the seminar, let's consider just this case here where they are entangled, okay? Uh, so let me talk first about, uh, briefly about this work here. Here, we consider the following. Uh, we will consider two clocks that are in a superposition of accelerations. So we will have a Hindler coordinates. So here you have your time, space, and here acceleration one and acceleration two, okay? And these clocks will be in entangled state of being with this trajectory or this one. While you're here in the source, I have a photon. I will send a photon that will come through this path here. And when it finds the clock that is here, this clock performs its operation, and when it finds the clock that's here, this other clock performs its operation, and then here you can detect this photon, etc. So uh, it is exemplified by, well, it is illustrated here. Okay, so I have A, B, and B, A, which is uh, these different accelerations. And uh, you can engineer in a way that the proper time here is exactly the proper time here. Okay, so A, the proper time of A here is the same as here and the same for B. 
and we can use the same ideas of the gravitation of quantum switch to apply this operation. And this would be a simulation of using a superposition of black holes to perform uh, this operation, because the metric closer to a black hole is approximately the same as the Hindler space-time. So we can use that to make a simulation of that using indefinite causal order near a black hole. Um, well, returning to what I was speaking, I was talking about these three setups. I talked about uh, this one here. Let me now tell about tell you about this work here, where we have the superposition of clocks on the surface on Earth. And now I am really talking about Earth here, not just a massive body that is um, that I have the draw of Earth. I'm really thinking about Earth. So, um, well, I think, well, I don't know why I have this slide here. <laughs> so just to remind that in this situation, we would have uh, the, uh, the indefinite order of events because of the proper time. And we will use the same here, the same idea, but mirrored, okay? And uh, the idea is the following. If I would have this situation here, where I have my clocks standing on Earth, and I'm not moving them to anywhere, they are there. And then I engineer such that the target system comes here to the exactly the same proper time, I would take one year to perform this operation on the graph of Earth, such that I have the enough um, time dilation. But then I will implement the same idea as I commented before, that is, we will wait some time, and then we will approximate the clocks, and then I will perform the quantum switch. And with this, we get the order of seconds. Okay? And, uh, well, the idea behind why we reduce so much the time is the following. So here I am exemplified, so just one branch of the entanglement of the superposition. So here I have the ticks of one of the clocks being large, and here the ticks very uh, short, right? Very, uh, there's no difference. And as I already told you, we cannot perform the quantum switch with the first or the second events because they, are in the, they have a space-life separation. But the third one has a time-life separation, and then we can perform the quantum switch with that. But then, instead of waiting here, standing these clocks the whole time, we will approximate them. And when we do that, the second event turns out to be in the future light coin of the second event. And then we can perform the quantum switch with some much earlier proper time. And, well, if you put even closer these clocks, you can make this time even shorter. So it depends on how much you can really approximate your clocks, okay? And, well, this is what's behind on how we can reduce this time. We also enter in some question on what? When I move the clocks, is this an event? Because, like, when I had the clocks there in the quantum space time, it was easy to believe that it was an event that I had with the uh, proper time. But now that the clocks are going whenever I want, can I still understand this as an event? And would this quantum switch, where I move the clocks, be less or more true than the other one where the clocks are standing? Okay? So we also have these questions to try to understand when thinking about this protocol. But the point is, whatever is the realization, our idea is closed to current technology. Because here, in this atomic fountain, it's an experiment for 2015. They have a superposition of one wave packet. Here it is the same atom, but in two different wave packets. Where they put them on a different of height of 54 centimeters during one second. And the parameters we had were like one second, order of seconds, and order of meters as well. So, like, might be, of course, that there are 
a lot of more complications, experimentally speaking, but the closest parameters, the basic parameters, are close to current technology, one order of magnitude, maybe. And this turned out that you really do a quantum switch using gravity directly there applying on the clocks. And, well, so it provides a test on the interplay of quantum theory and general relativity. That's some kind of experiment that practically doesn't exist. Well, we still have the question. It's a genuine quantum switch or just a simulation? You have two events or four events. Uh, please, Alfek. Can you explain the in terms of the definition of what is an event and what is not? In the event, you put the where you put the clocks together. You can associate an event to, there are many definitions, this is the problem, and this is what I am going to comment right now, uh, that you can define an event, well, in this experiment of quantum clocks, an event is given by the quantum system, and such that the internal observables, that in the case is the proper time, is coincident. So in both brains of the superposition, this internal observable, that is the proper time, is the same, so you can associate the two proper times. So the view, if you would have an agent there inside the quantum clock that is just performing internal measurements, and in the case the only observable is available is the proper time, then this agent would say, I am in the time two, so now is the time two. So now is my event, you know, in, in the sense that event is being defined. I'm not telling that's the best definition. It is just one that is used in the literature. So, but why is it important if you define uh, putting the clocks together as an event or not? Because you said that... Uh, no, the thing of putting the clocks closer to each other has nothing to do with the definition of event to make it better, but to make the realization of the quantum switch something doable using gravity. Just for the practical reason of making it faster. Putting the clocks together is just for making, optim optimizing the experiment and being possible to do, just practical. But then you have the question, but is it still the same event? Then you have the question. I don't know if it is. So it's an open question. Can I still assign the same event if I move the clocks or if they are standing? I mean, I am associating an event to a point in space time or to a system that might be moving or not. This is the point. OK. Uh, some other questions? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, a genuine quantum switch. Well, I don't have a specific definition, but I'm putting the sense that it's a true event quantum switch. <coughs> let's say that it was a quantum switch where the events are really the same. That I'm not using two different events, associating as the same, ah. okay. and uh, tell yeah, this is the same event, but it would be then a simulation. Yes, sure. Generally, quantum switch is probably what is in the first paper on the quantum switch, which is sometimes also called the mathematical switch. Mathematically, this is a high order map. It's, that's what, what I want to say. It doesn't say anything about physical realization. You have an input channel, like a unitarist or a system map, it gives an output.
considering that the unitary applied at two, two different times is two different gates. That's is not what is written in the paper. That's not the opinion. We can discuss this. Yeah, but I agree. It should be one usage of unit. Um, uh, does someone else have any comments that would like to? Yeah, please. I'm not so confused about this. Having been uh, a business group and then class lab, don't have anything on this. But somehow, uh, from my point of view, what, what I would be interested in is to take the definition of events of general relativity, to start from somewhere. Okay. And then see if uh, there is a way to show that that definition fails. Mm -hmm. Um, wait. Yes. You say, look, there is this definition of what it means even in the classical theory of gravity. Um, Can you say this in English? Uh, uh, I will present some table now with a few definitions. Maybe it will help okay. in this discussion. Maybe I show the next slides and then we go again to the discussion. I think it would help to organize uh, everything. Uh, well, we still have this question, and also when we compare all the quantum suites we have, the question is, are here in all of these two events or four events realizations for all these proto proposals here, right? And when I'm telling uh, a genuine realization, I'm telling a two event, and a simulation I'm referring as a four event quantum suite. So let's compare these four cases here for the different definitions we find. So um, if I want to take a general relativistic position and be very conservative and say an event must be defined by a point on a manifold. In this case, these three situations here would be simulations because A corresponds to two events and B corresponds to two events, so I would have four events in total. And when I have a, the quantum switch on quantum space time, it's kind of inconclusive because it depends on the theory of quantum gravity you are considering, and it doesn't really bring you um, to some. Do you want to comment? No, finish. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can. cannot be a simulation. No, it, uh, you cannot define anything as a point on a manifold. Yeah, but this is the definition of an event of GR, right? No. No? It's not that? How is it? Because in the paper of Marco, it tells it's a point on manifold. Or I mean wrong. I understand it's wrong. Okay, but uh, the, the thing about uh, the point on the manifold is that, uh, <coughs> um, I mean, uh, So yeah. these would be simulations.
talking about is even if it's a point price, it's a happen in a point price. Now, if you define that every happening has to So you would be referring to this second definition? I, would, I don't want to discuss it about the definition. I think we can agree on <laughs> that. Uh, okay, I think uh, I look at Irene and Victoria wants to say something. I, I don't know who of you want first. <laughs> you can decide between all. <laughs> But how you distinguish then the indefinite causal order to just like um, Matzander where you put boxes A, B, B, A, or if I even perform the operation A with different apparatuses, would it still be the same happening? Well, I would say it's a different apparatus if it's happening in each of them. But I mean, you don't, the result, f the final result's the same in the quantum switch, no? If you're different. The output is the same, that's the, that's the, that's the problem what is the mathematical switch, so you have to, to show uh -huh. somehow that you use it once. And I, I think what you see is in this uh, unfolded interference, you ask <coughs> A, B, B, A. And I think yeah. either you have a way to identify this same end <laughs> in the same region and the same box, yeah. or you have two different boxes, in which case I would say you have indeed four in there. Yeah. I think this is a nice because this should be contrasted with the switch. Where it's obvious that it has four events. But, um, well, I think, and Catherine is looking to me. <laughs> I think they wanted to sell something, I hope too. I don't know if it's constructed, but you said in event, Mario, you said an event happens at one point. I mean, that is, you don't need quantum gravity. Right? And if you 
But even though there is all these arguments about being, and the, in this case, I would have that the quantum switch on code table would be a genuine realization. I understand that you would end up with this conclusion. The question that I would have for this definition is, what do we learn about quantum graft in this case? Because then you're putting on the same foot one task of optical table that I'm not telling it is bad, it's very good, but in the sense that it's not exactly quantum graft. Exactly that. That's the great insight, that it's all the same. But yeah, it's all the same, but uh, so is graft doing nothing there? So you That's think that thing. fundamentally this one is uh, in the same foot as this one, like I mean, these two switches would be... Uh, I wouldn't say it's a same foot, but if you think about the, the system that is undergoing indefinite flows of order, I, I would say on that system it's the same, and the fact that it is the same is a very nice observation. That is what we learned about that. That's why mm -hmm. your, your proposal is undistinguishable for me from our proposal if I'm talking about what the system experiences in this and in that proposal. Is it then it's funny that we don't see any like anything else than like kind of this like in quote switch experiments in optical like in, in optical experiments like there's nothing that goes beyond quantum optics. Like wouldn't wouldn't you kind of like for me it's something that this genuine is basically saying that like you have to have like you have to measure some effect that cannot be explained by like the fields we already have that do very well. Like otherwise you're just simulating um, like a maybe more general theory, but that's kind of like a, has the same predictive power, the same uh, than what we already have. I think.
Yeah, uh, going to this question of Pauli, uh, <laughs> if you would also think about the clock, there is also a way of telling that, okay, I have to consider the internal, um, the internal degrees of freedom and the proper time of the clock is something important to define an event. It should be included. You could err on that. I'm, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to here to defend one side or the other. I'm just putting all of the definitions on uh, unbiased, okay? And in case you would find it's uh, defined by the proper time, the quantum switch and optical table would be a simulation because you would have a different proper time for um, you have a different global time, etc. While the other three would be genuine realizations. And then you could tell, okay, so why space time has a meaning here, but here, these other two, which are experiments should be performed on the same surface of Earth, just because we're measuring the proper time, then this is a simulation, this is a genuine quantum switch. Like, it's still something that, if you would believe this is the better definition, this is something that should be better explored. Or uh, if you would tell, okay, but this one I don't like because it sounds artificial. I mean, I'm manually accelerating the clocks. I should have the clocks just defined by the, somehow I believe that the definition of proper time just really makes sense if it is induced by gravitational time dilations and not by accelerations. So these two would be simulations and the other two genuine quantum switches. But then you would have to uh, explain again why here this space time has some meaning and here it would be, uh, you could use another something more general. Um, and finally you could say, okay, just the proper time is low, it's not enough. I should took all the possible observables that actually it is what, uh, it's a definition that is used in some quantum gravity approach. And then in this case, everything, it should be defined by all possible observables. So instead of just the proper time being the same, uh -huh. any other observable, local observable that I could measure. measure this is another point that the proper time, I would measure that or not. And yeah. Yes, yes. So this is the point. Yeah. They would be. Yeah, yeah, the this is the point. You we could consider just the same event when everything is the same. So you could measure that you don't destroy because it's the same at, at that event. Even some other observer, for example, if you measure the weight, or I don't know something that you, I'm not, I cannot think now. Yeah. But, but is it the quantum mechanical mess? Quantum mess quantum yes. <laughs> Path to the other, from the other, because I don't of even, even use the electron passing through to measure this. But if I don't do it, then the electron does distinguish it. Yes, and but I mean this would enter in the discussion that I'm not trying to like descend or yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. I'm just like yeah. putting everything and um, uh, listing all the possibilities. This is something that is considered. Then it's everything a simulation. Two events that can be compared. All events ever must be different because there is something around the event which is different. Yeah. And in this case, I would have four events for everything and I would have a simulation. So like, but it's something that it's important to be discussed because it's a kind of definition that is taking into consideration to many physicists. So uh, we should convince that the operation is somehow um, on, on operation is somehow more fundamental than this, okay? Uh, I mean, it might be that the other definition is better, is the truth, I don't know. But if it is, we should agree on that and it should be explored. Or sometimes you're tired of everything and you say, okay, when you have a classical space time, then it's a point of manifold and end of story. And when it's a quantum space time, you can use a more general definition. 
And then we have this, these things here, simulations, and this one that is, sounds more crazy is a genuine. But then if you do that, the more general definition used here should then globe this other one. And it doesn't really happen with proper time, for example, or any other definition considered in the literature of indefinite causal word. And this, if you would take this consideration here, it also should be further explored. Okay. And um, yeah, and these are like the definitions that I found to be more relevant that are being discussed around the indefinite causal order. Okay. And well, just to end up, but we can't keep discussing that <laughs> much longer. I will be happy. Uh, well, we need further discussion on the definition of event in the, well, uh, on the indefinite causal order. Well, I summarized it for you, the experiments on optical tables, on quantum space-time, simulation of a black hole, quantum realization of quantum switch on Earth's gravity, and the interpretation remains open, or if it's not open, if people are still disagreeing. <laughs> and we need to understand what is an event, or at least find a common language to make clear what are we really discussing about which point are we starting from which definition to the conclusions before not being debating the conclusions using different definitions. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> uh, and thank my colleagues from St. Summer School who helped me to do that table. <laughs> Yes. One way, I think maybe Martin likes this, that what I think shared is like one way to do, to make the progress is to really say what can you do with one or the other. And if you do, if you can't do something with one, then uh, yeah. it's not really about how many events you do, but what, what are resources? Like, what mm -hmm. are resources? And then, and then I think it is some, if, if I define, we may disagree, if I define it as the usage by a counter in a box that counts how many times uh, a system enters, then all these optical and all these implementation shows one count. I mean, there is no way out of that, okay? If we define it then, one can then relax this. And then we can ask ourselves, okay, but if I give you uh, this amount of time, uh, or just one point in time, can you do that? And then I think there are answers like where, where I would first ask when you give me one point of time, whom do you give one point of time? Do you give Alice and Bob? If the answer is yes, okay, then the gravitational switch satisfies this. There's one point in proper time, there's one usage of this. But then if somebody uh, says, I gave you even more than that, of one point, I give you two points in time, but I give you one usage of box. But then optical switch is including that as well. And both of them are better than and so I think that that may give a little bit of um, take, like uh, not concentrating on definitions preferred and what is event, but can you do it or can't you do it? And maybe it will clarify the issue. Uh, and it's just for, for both. I'm not saying anything uh -huh. more. So and then, then I think there is a way to um, to see that there are two resources here. And one is uh, query complexity. It's how many times you make the usage. And I think we should. With this definition, we should agree it's one. Maybe we can try then to count also when you use, when you have a vacuum, which is another definition, mm -hmm. which will make then something not useful as, as like that. And then the other resource is how much time space you have. Whereas I think the second one depends also with which reference frame. That, that, that mm -hmm. Whether it's a quarter time or it's proper time or different. Um, one, one thing that I told I agree very much that I always wondering is that is exactly that what you can do when if we take other examples what uh, one can do that the others cannot right and until now I didn't find in the indefinite causal order but thinking about quantum switch I think it is a bit hard because the quantum switch is the most simple task right 
these advantages are more about query compliance. Like how many times you use the boxes? Usually people are not interested in how much time you use. But mm -hmm. and then all what ever been published about the advantage of indexing code of order is achievable with all. Like, uh, if for example, we could would put like uh, an agent measuring something inside, for sure, always with the um, optical switch, it would have something different because always the proper time will be different. But here might be that we could engineer something that all observables would be the same. I don't know, but it's seems to be more possible, so we would have more fair that idea of closed laboratories. You know, like, uh, well, I, I have a bit of this feeling that the closed laboratories, you have, okay, once the usage, but in the optical switch, I don't see the idea of closed, neither the others as well. I don't see much, but here I see less. The usage of, the usage of closed laboratories you know, like in the idea that they have a past and they have a future. It seems that the past of one is in the future of the other. The past of the A, one A is in the future of the other A. So it's not like a closed laboratory in the formalism of process matrix. So it seems for me a bit, this is some important point. But it's not, it's, uh, um, 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 when you say this, I think we have this image Sending something, and then she is in the future, and then it's not closer. It's, it, it's not for that part of the superposition. In one amplitude, it's closed, and in the other amplitude, it's mm -hmm. closed. Therefore, that would be another way of um, contrary to your conclusion, understanding, is that in each branch it's closed. Okay, you're saying each branch. Because they do not communicate these two branches. Mm -hmm, true. Yes. I would know how operation to test this. To verify Yeah, it's another point that yeah. you have more. Of uh, the system. 
existing superposition of being somewhere or being in a vacuum, then it also counts. So anyway, it will count four. The I can even say, I always count the vacuum. I have infinity. But, but then I would compare this resource with other resources, say this is then, uh, for example, if this is a four counts, then it, it's not two counts, sorry, also for three, so not like the uh, input now, let me make it have a different thing. So in order to avoid this problem, that right. but, but this is a, there is a, there are, there is a, there, there, there are other protocols not the switch but the other protocols in which to, to, to precisely use the vacuum as a resource right? so, 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 so that, that is the uh, uh, in a sense in a sense the, 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 the absence of a particle in your detector gives you the uh, the information that you will to, to, to extract information from the from not detecting the particle actually from detecting I think the statement is that if you make use of that, it's better not. If you make use of that, then it's not use of that because it's better than the channel. I think that's the quote. Yeah, but the, 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 my point is that uh, we should not define counting of events uh, only for uh, in di different in different ways for different uh, for different protocols. Right? No, so, it's so, so, so you should it should be done. So so if uh, if I have the quantum switch. And I define the count in one way, and I have some other protocol, the one that we discussed by, by Osam from Datich. Um, and uh, in that protocol, I def I, I'm not allowed to define counting in a different way. So, so I should not be. So, so you should be found for all protocols. And then, if you do that, then basically you, you I mean, for, for some protocol, for this one, um, uh, counting the vacuum is mandatory. Always count the vacuum. And that, that's kind of the, the I understood the that the sum for that should have four times if you count the number of particles. And the switch would have and the number of entering the particle, the switch would still have just two. So that one of those uh, 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 two. The sum for sends and receives the signal. So once it was already at the beginning in the last problem, then it sends back and then it receives once more some measurement. So yeah. each lab has so two and twice. Precisely, yes. So, so there are four, four, four events in total. Yeah. But one of them is always going to be the interaction with the vacuum. So the particle will not enter one of the laboratories in the end. It would be the interaction, but if you have a counter that uh, scales, like whenever a particle is there, that says, OK, it's one, it was shown twice in each lab of the four, where I have the switch on the mm -hmm. So three times. Uh, maybe three times. Okay. Yeah, so, so the four one, so the four one is a clock, no? But it could be more than what I want. That's why it is not the process mechanism between two parties, because in one party at least it will come once Yes, more. precisely. That's 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 my point. But uh, but uh, uh, if you do include it, if you do include the vacuum, then you have the four uh, events in that, in, in that protocol. So yeah. so um, okay, anyway, my point is just that uh, the, the notion of counting should be uh, discussed in a, in, a, in a way that is protocol independent. Yeah. It should be protocol independent, but I think and, you and can have different definitions. And then yes, you can, but yeah. the, 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 the thing is that uh, you want to cover all protocols, you want to have the notion of counting that is compatible with all protocols. And that can be a tricky thing to do, because uh, I can always come up with some protocol that might you know, have a problem with the notion of counting. I'm not sure that it's the measurement apparatus. You can, you can use another measurement apparatus to count, which I find. I just say that once you fix, you can make a uh, order of different pro of, of usefulness. And then you can change your definition and then you make a new order. Yes. Uh, I think that left tires on to add something.